Hello everybody, Jimmy is Promo here back again with another awesome video. And in today's video, we will be talking about the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Now with the holiday season just wrapping up, a lot of you have just got your paws on the Galaxy Note 9. So let's talk about the most important or the first 15 settings to change to get the most and the best performance out of your Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Now, if you are brand new here at the channel of Jimmy's Promo, don't forget to hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications to get notified for future videos. And don't forget about that playlist tab on the very top to check out the entire playlist I've made so far for the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. The first setting change that we will be playing with is going to be the display. So you want to pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon and hit on display. Now there's a couple different adjustments we will be making within the screen, but the first one we'll talk about is the screen resolution. Now, the thing I like about this display setting here is that there is something for everybody. If you're somebody that's right in the middle of wanting to have as much battery life as possible and also taking full advantage of the screen resolution, you can go to that middle option, which is the full HD plus. Now, if you want to go right over here, here and save as much battery as possible, you can head down to the HD plus, but with the high quality display that's in the Galaxy Note 9, I would not suggest doing this HD plus, you know, this, this phone right here is not an Apple product. So you might as well go with something that is right in the middle range or the high quality, take full advantage of the display that goes with the Galaxy Note 9. So if you are somebody who wants to save a little bit of battery, go with the full HD plus, but if you really want to take full advantage of the display, go with the wide quad HD. And actually ever since I've had the Galaxy Note 9, I've actually always had it on the top resolution status. Uh, when I had the other Galaxy Note series, I did go in the middle, but this one has a good enough battery that it's able to last me just as long or longer than my Galaxy Note 8. So I am perfectly happy with the wide Quad HD. Since we are on the topic of display, a couple things I highly recommend is having your auto brightness turned on because every situation you run into, you don't have to have your brightness all the way up because in this case of this room, it's actually pretty good right over here and it does save a little bit of battery. Also underneath auto brightness, the cool thing is that you're able to reset your usage patterns. So if you feel that you want your phone to relearn you with how you are adjusting your brightnesses, you can actually reset your usage patterns. Now also below here, a couple things I would also have turned on is the screen mode for the adaptive display. Display. So you might as well keep it there because it'll automatically optimize the color range, saturation, and sharpness of your display. If you go down to this AMOLED Cinema, it doesn't really have that pop that the adaptive display does have. And you are actually to play with a little bit if you want it cooler or warmer of a display. Um, I wouldn't really play too much with those advanced options. Uh, just kind of keep it where it is with that adaptive display. The second setting to change or make sure you turn on is Find My Mobile. So what you want to do is pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon, go down to where says the biometrics and security and inside of here you have the option of find my mobile now on the very bottom over here the send last location it automatically is turned off when you first have your device so i highly suggest turning this one on when you go inside of these settings because it allows your phone to send its last location to the find my mobile server when the battery falls below a certain level now the thing about this one is that it is linked up with your samsung account so you want to make sure you have a samsung account created you log in and it gives you the remote access that you're able to remotely access your phone if you're not around it. So you'll head over to the findmymobile.samsung.com and you're able to track your phone. If it's lost, you can see exactly where it's at. You're also able to have the remote access if you need to unlock your phone. If you don't know what your password was for your lock screen, you'd also be able to make your phone ring at its highest volume if you don't know where it's at. Maybe it's in your house or friend's house, a little kid, maybe hit it underneath a cushion, you don't know where it is. Uh, you're able to go to this website and you're able to make your phone ring at its highest volume. So it does a lot more than just finding a lost phone. It can get you back into your phone if you forget that lock screen. Setting change number three is making sure that you are backing up your photos and videos properly. So head up over into your Google folder. Right over here, you have an option for Google Photos. And over here on the very top left-hand side, hit on that little menu and go down to where it says settings. Now you wanna go underneath the backup and sync. And now this one is going to be synced with whatever Gmail that you have associated with it. Make sure that this one is turned on. You are able to have different upload sizes. Now, if you would like to have the free unlimited storage, do it as a high quality. Now, this one is just a little reduced in size. It's still really good visually done and uploaded, and you're able to have it as free unlimited storage. But if you want it to be uploaded as the original size, which is when you take it on your phone, it will be going against your uh, quota of how much storage you have. Now, I have one terabyte. Maybe a lot of people might have 15 gigabytes. So I just highly suggest having it as the high quality free unlimited storage. Even though I have one terabyte, 
I do still have mine as that free unlimited so I don't hit any type of a quota or peak. Now, underneath here for the cellular, cellular data backup, have it turned on for your photos so it's being done over the cellular so you don't forget or lose any of those pictures. But for videos, you can turn this on if you have unlimited data or a huge, huge data package and you never get close to it. But I still have this one turned off uh, and mine will be uploading videos when it's connected to a Wi-Fi signal. Setting change number four is playing with the touch sensitivity if you have a screen protector. Now, if you have a screen protector and it took away some of that touch sensitivity, then you are actually able to gain all of that back. Now, I know that my favorite one is going to be the Whitestone Dome Glass. That's the one that I use on my devices and it has no issue with touch screen sensitivity, but the other ones out there sometimes does cause a little bit of problems. Head over into your settings, go down to your advanced features, and you'll go to the very, very bottom where it has the option of touch sensitivity. Now, again, you only need to have this one turned on if you're using a screen protector and if it is you know giving you any type of issues or problems setting change number five is going to be playing with the home screen rotation so sometimes you might be playing with your phone you might be getting in and out of different applications a lot of them are going to be landscape and you don't want to just keep on going back and forth between portrait and horizontal so how you are able to turn this on where you are able to change your home screen is by going anywhere on any of these home screens here press and hold on the screen anything that is blank and you'll have the option here for the home screen settings. Once you click on that one, you scroll down just a little bit over here, you can see the option of portrait mode only. So if portrait mode only is turned on, that means that your phone will not go to the horizontal or landscape. Now, if you have this one turned off, now you are able to have it sideways for you. It just makes it super easy when you go back and forth between screens and applications. Setting change number six is removing the animation scale. So you're able to go from screen to screen or application to application much quicker. So you wanna pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon. You're gonna scroll down and you're basically going to unlock the developer options. How you're able to do that is go to your about phone, click on the software information and tap on that build number seven times. Once you have done that, you have unlocked the developer options and now you're able to go inside of here you'll scroll down and you're gonna find where it says the animation scales. Now, when you find these ones, you wanna put them down over to the 0.5X. Now, originally these will be at the 1X, but when you go from screen to screen, there's a little animation and I don't really need that animation. I wanna go from screen to screen quicker. So as example, let me show you what it does when you have the animation scale at 2X. You can see how it took a little bit more time there. Now we're gonna do 5X. You see how it's slowly coming in. Well, you put that animation scale at that 0.5, you do the same thing with the transition scale along with the animator duration scale, then you're gonna have a much fluid, faster movement between screen to screen and application to application. Now, if you do put the animation to off, sometimes there's a few things you might lose, but if you do go to the animation off and you find that a couple things have changed, it's giving you a little bit of problems, um, you are able to just go right back inside of here, put it right back at that 0.5X, and then you're still good to go. But put it right here and you're gonna be perfectly fine. Setting change number seven is very important. It is playing with the camera and there's actually a couple things that I've included with this exact same number of number seven. The first one is gonna be dealing with the super slow-mo. When you do wanna do anything that is in super slow-mo, you wanna have this option over here as manual. If you have it as auto, now you have to wait for something to come into that square for it to do something. But maybe you wanna capture something that's coming onto the screen and you want to manually change or choose when you want it to be in super slow-mo. So make sure you have that manual turned on. And also again with super slow-mo, you head over into your settings and then right over here, you have the option here um, for the single take or multi-take. Turn on that multi-take so you're able to do it up to 20 times in one video. If you do single take within your video, you only have one super slow-mo moment and you might want to have multiple. Now, one pro tip that I do have to say if you are making any changes to the camera, always make sure that you are in auto and then you head down into the settings. This way, everything is activated where you're able to turn on and toggle and change. But if you put it to something else, such as super slow-mo, when you go inside of here, a lot of things are grayed out and some things you're not able to change. Even even if you're inside of live focus, you can go inside of settings. Again, a couple things will be grayed out and some things you're not able to change. So a little pro tip, if you do wanna change anything, make sure you're inside of auto and then this way you'll be able to go inside settings and everything is there for you to play with. Now inside of here, one of the things that you are able to change is the 
the video size of what you're recording. Originally out of the box, it actually comes with either the full HD or full HD 60 frames per second. It's one of these two. Uh, you might as well switch it over to that quad HD or the nice thing that is amazing with the Galaxy Note 9 is that it does have the ultra HD 60 frames per second. So if you do want to edit your video after you're done shooting it, you can put this one at half the speed and you still have 30 frames per second happening at ultra HD. So I would maybe suggest do the QHD. It's really good quality. Um, or you can do the full HD 60 frames per second so it looks more smooth. A couple other settings to make sure that you have turned on is going to be the scene optimizer. Scene optimizer is a way that it's able to automatically adjust to any situation you're in. If you're taking a picture of food or flowers or if you're indoor or outdoor. Also the tracking autofocus. So then this way you're able to select something on the screen and it's able to actually stay within the screen to make sure it's always in autofocus mode. And then the last one inside the camera is going to be the quick launch. So scroll down pretty much almost towards the very bottom over here. You'll see where you're able to quickly launch the camera by pressing the power button twice. So make sure you turn this one on if you don't want to miss a moment. The next setting to change is going to be one that is pretty popular inside of the advanced features and that is the finger sensor gesture. So what you're able to do is swipe down on that fingerprint reader and then it pulls down the notifications panel. So you can change anything that's inside of your quick menu. You can actually pull it down twice and you can change any of these quick settings. You can check out your notifications and how you're able to turn this on is by going inside of the settings. You're going to go inside of the advanced features. And once you go to advanced features, you have it right here, finger sensor gesture. Now, once you have this thing turned on, you're able to do everything I just showed you just by doing a simple swipe down on the fingerprint reader. Setting change number nine is using the split screen or multi window and it's using it with the recents button. So what you're able to do is pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon, go down to where it says the advanced features and inside of here you have the option for multi window. So first off, just make sure you turned on the option for use the recents button. And when you use the recents button, if you press and hold, it'll launch it as a snap window of that little application or the split screen view. This one is one that is definitely helpful. So this way, if you press and hold on recents, you're able to choose what applications you want to be running in this, the multi-window or split screen. So let's say that we head over into YouTube and then maybe there's another application that I would like to use. You can press and hold on the recents on the bottom. So you can actually open up an application that you've already had on the bottom or you can go to your app list. So if you wanted to open up something else, maybe your calculator, now you're able to do it this way. Now, when you're done using your calculator, if you press and hold on the recents button, it takes you right back to that last application you were just using. Now again, maybe this was text messaging. They texted you back. You're able to open this back up. Maybe this was the text messaging. You texted them right on back. And again, you went back to your YouTube so it's not interfering with what you're doing. And one little hidden feature I always love to show this one is that let's say that you are inside of YouTube and the very last thing that you've used was Chrome. Well, if you wanted to go back to that you know, last application you just did, if you actually double press the recent app button twice, it'll go back and forth between the last two applications that you've used. So this is a little pro tip, a little hidden feature that I'll probably show off in another video in the future. Not a lot of people know or use that. Setting change number 10 is playing with your navigation bar. So maybe you've used a different phone in the past, maybe it was an LG, or maybe you're a left-handed and this back button was on this side and your recent apps was on this side. So how you're able to change that back if you wanna be a little bit more comfortable is heading inside your settings. You can go down to your display and then you will scroll down to where you see the option of navigation bar. Now inside the navigation bar, you can change the color of what you want on the very bottom, just to kind of fit your own needs. Um, also over here, you can change your button layout. As I said from before, you can put your back button, home button, and then recent. So if you choose this option, now it's reversed or it's set up for you if you're left-handed. Uh, and then also you can go back to where it was originally. You can also unlock with the home button and then you can change how hard of a press you're using with that home button. I just kind of keep mine over here in the middle. Um, but mostly I just really wanted to show you the button layout if you used a different device in the future or you're left-handed. Setting change number 11 is probably something that you've done early on in setting up your phone and that is by playing with your lock screen type. Now if you head inside your settings you're going to go down to where it says the lock screen and underneath here you can choose which lock screen type you would like to use. You can actually see here that I'm using three different ways of unlocking my phone. Um, I have pin, I have intelligent scan, and fingerprints. Now for your lock screen type, my suggestion that you can use but you don't have to listen would probably be the pin or if you need 
need something a little bit more high security, go with the password. Pattern and swipe, they don't really do too much. People can actually see what you're doing if you're making a little box or a little V. So it's not really that good of a, of a lock screen type. Pin is a little bit better, especially the password. But definitely have a biometric that's set up to your phone. If you have the intelligent scan, then you don't really need to turn on your face or iris because intelligent scan uses both of those at the exact same time. So it's choosing which one is better in the environment that you are in. It would use your face recognition if it is light out um, and maybe you're outside or indoor and the light is on, it's able to unlock your phone with your face. But let's say it's dark, maybe you're in your room, you're about to go to bed, maybe you're at a movie theater, then it'll use the infrared to use your iris. That is what the intelligent scan is. Definitely use this one if you have the Galaxy S9, S9 Plus, as well as the Galaxy Note 9. And then I also have my fingerprint in case if I wanted to unlock it really quick without even looking at the phone or anything else. Um, as it's coming out of the pocket, finger touches the sensor, boom, it's open, it's unlocked, and there we go. Setting change number 12 is playing with the Dolby Atmos or the stereo sound that happens on this device. Now the Galaxy Note 9 is 140% louder than the Galaxy Note 8, and the Dolby Atmos is what allows it to do that. Now if you pull down the quick settings and if you tap on the word, it's a quick view of that setting that you're able to change. But if you press and hold on the icon, it'll take you into the full screen and the full settings. Now with this one, you can keep this one as auto, but I do want to let you know if you're watching YouTube and especially my videos, if you have it set up to movie, you will definitely hear the background music a little louder because when you're watching a movie, you have to hear the footprints, the gunfire, everything else. And so this one is picking up everything. If you want to watch my video, switch it over to music or voice and you're going to kind of drown out a little bit of the background music and hear my voice just a little bit more clear. Setting change number 13 is playing with the keyboard size along with making sure that you have your number line. So if you open up anything where your keyboard pops up, you have the option for settings. Now when you open up settings, you will have this option here of keyboard layout and feedback. Now underneath here, this is where you're able to change the size and the layout. So underneath here, you're able to turn on that number line. And for me, this is a huge deal. Uh, I can't really stand phones that does not have a number line. It's set up just like my normal keyboard I have with my, my laptop. And so this just makes it super easy. Then you can actually change the size. How big do you want your keyboard to be? Um, and so for me, mine's kind of in the middle. You can also have alternative characters inside of this keyboard as well. Um, now for me, I don't really need that one, but definitely that number line and you know adjusting this line to where it works better for my fingers. Setting change number 14 is playing with the app tray as well as your home screens on hiding applications. So sometimes you just wanna clean up a couple different applications that you don't really need to see all the time. If you press and hold anywhere on the screen that is empty, you go into that home screen settings. This is where you're able to hide applications. Or if you've hidden an application from before and you don't know how to find it, this is the other way you're able to find it. So if I wanted to hide maybe BX actions and maybe I wanted to hide ADA64, now I'm able to apply that and and it's not going to be shown anywhere in these screens. Now, both of these were at the very front of the alphabet, um, and so it does not show anywhere on this entire screen. Two of those applications are now gone, but if you wanted to have those things come on back, you're able to go through here, the home screen settings again, you're able to have these ones show, and you can see how many applications you have and how many are hidden, and then once you hit on that apply again, when you open this back up, now you're able to see those applications come on back, which is gonna be right over here on these two screens, just because I kind of pretty much added them back into the screens of the app tray. And setting change number 15, the very last one is the blue light filter. So for the blue light filter, you do wanna make sure that you do have this one turned on. And if you go inside of the settings over here, you can have it turned on now, or you can actually have it turned on as a scheduled. I would usually highly suggest putting it on as a schedule and do it as a custom schedule. So in this way, if you're somebody who goes to bed at midnight, put it at 11 p.m. If you're somebody who goes to bed at 11, change this one to 10 p.m. Because actually what the blue light does is it takes away the blue color inside of the display, which blue suppresses is the melatonin and melatonin is used to get you tired and sleepy and go to bed. Now, if you are in this bright blue area, same thing with your TV that's in your living room, you're suppressing the melatonin and you're probably not gonna go to bed right away. So you can have this one turn on at a schedule, so in this way you're able to sleep better at night. So this has been the 15 settings you should change now if you have the Galaxy Note 9. If you guys like this video, make sure you just give this thing a huge thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit on that subscribe button if you have not subscribed already, this little red circle on the very bottom left-hand side, that'll get you subscribed to the channel. Share this video with your friends and family and social media sites, and outside of that, I'll see you guys later.